Hello everyone. Let's talk about cellular networks and ITP. Here are some standards prescriptors to take like ensure that your 3G 4G device whether a USB modem a MIFI device a card or a smartphone has all available updates installed to address vulnerabilities in the firmware or software have a firewall installed and properly configured on the host device have antivirus and anti malware software installed and turned on use strong passwords or multi factor authentication for accessing sites involving financial data or sensitive personal information enable logging and alerting for the wi-fi part of the connection enable wpa2 encryption on a mobile hotspot device such as the mifi or sprints over drive disable ssrg broadcasting and disable the dhcp server when using a mobile hotspot device or the mobile hotspot function your phone which allows for multiple computers to use the 3G or 4G connection monitor the hotspot software to be sure only devices you know about are connected if the device allows you to set a maximum number of users set this to one if you are going to be the only one co connecting to the device Change the default administrative passwords on your 3G or 4G devices. If your 3G or 4G device supports MAC filtering, enable it and create a whitelist of the physician and ad physical addresses of the device such as your laptop that you want to be able to use 3G. 4G and block all. How cellular networks work? The basic components of the cellular networks are the wireless network, the core network, the internet connection, and the PSTN. Cellular cellular users access the network via radio signals between the devices and the cellular towers. This wireless network is also connected to the core network, which is a wired network. The wired core network connects to the public switched telephone network PSTN for making voice calls to landlines the core network also connects to the internet using some protocol gateways and multi protocol mobility managers for sending data to and receiving data from other data networks the core network uses service nodes which are servers to store data such as subscriber information of course it's far more complicated than this there is some security issues like anyone who has worked in network administration and security knows that any network is only as secure as its weakest point the problem with complex internet works such as the cellular networks is that they have so many parts and thus so many potential points of security failure overall security of cellular data transmission depends on the security of all of the four major components listed above wireless connections 
are inherently more difficult to secure than wired transmissions. When signals go through the airwaves, it's easier to intercept them because you don't have to physically tap into a line. Anyone with a transmitter receiver can capture the signals since it's difficult or impossible to prevent the interception of the signals. The key to securing a wireless network is encrypting those signals so that they will be useless to any unauthorized party who does intercept them. Early cellular networks did not adequately secure the wireless signals in transit. However, 3G and above networks use strong, cheaper keys to in encrypt the signals. Two-way authentication is used there. Security of the core network refers to the security of the service nodes, servers, and the security of data in transit over the wire between the service nodes. The MAPSEC protocol provides security for the application layer protocol that is used for exchanging information that is specific to a subscriber and authentication information. IPsec is also used on the core network to protect communications in transit between service nodes. However, use of MAPSEC and IPsec is optional and up to the service provider. Its provider has its own security policies regarding physical security of the servers and remote access to those servers. Just as the internet poses a threat to home network connected to it, it also poses a threat to the core network. Attackers can travel from the internet through the gateways and infiltrate the core network. This include DOS attacks and SMS text spam because it is connected to the internet through the core network. The PSTN's security cannot be assured either. The PSTN was designed as a closed network and so did not include security mechanisms designed to protect from the types of threats that can come in from the internet. The SS7 protocols it uses are plain text and don't include authentication. The good news is that cellular carries are becoming more aware of the vulnerabilities of the cellular networks and are taking steps to remotely. Remotely, nonetheless, it's just as important for you to take measures to secure your own data and systems when operating them on a cellular network. Recent reports such as the MCAF report on mobile security released this month focus on a smartphone and tablet operating systems but it's important to realize that laptops and desktops connected to the internet via cellular transmission cell id in combination with the MCC, the LAC and the MNC is the unique identifier of the BTS. The cell ID of the BTS has the association with certain mobile station. 
which is known by the mobile device and can be utilized to appropriate the position of the mobile device GSM UMTS service zone is separated into location areas where every LA incorporates at least one radio cells every LA and radio cell has unique identifier named cell ID and lack BTS covers the set of the cells and this is structural GSM UMTS architecture the GSM network structure is divided into a base station subsystem and core network which is shown in the figure in the base trans uh, transceiver station BTS is a main communication